Welcome back to Blaine's World. Today, we're going to be cleaning out a throttle body. So the other day, uh, my Jeep was running kind of funny, it's idling weird, even the throttle was sticking, so I'd be driving down the road and I'd go to shift gears and it would stay up to like 2500 RPMs for 3 or 4 seconds and then it would kind of let, let off. And so I kind of checked the usual stuff, I checked my uh, throttle cables and everything seemed to be working fine. I even sprayed some WD-40 in there. Um, I even checked my floor mat, make sure that wasn't the case. So I kind of checked some of the easier culprits of when a throttle is sticking and I didn't find anything unusual. So next step is, is I'm gonna get into the throttle body, clean that out, take out the idle air control a uh, valve and sensor and uh, we'll get that cleaned out as well and hopefully that will help Jeep run better. Usually you can just clean those things out every once in a while they do go bad and have to replace those but for now I'm just gonna clean it and see how it goes. Tools you're gonna need for the job 10 millimeter extension and I used a 3 8 ratchet flathead screwdriver you're gonna need a T20 and a T15 Torx and uh, those are on the throttle body to remove the idle air control valve and sensor. So you need those two if you're gonna take that off and clean it, but those are the basic tools you're gonna need. So you just wanna take a screwdriver. And uh, loosen these up. You can also use a nut driver if you want. Oops. Get that off. Just move this out of the way. Next up, get these. These, uh, Connectors off. I swear these electrical connectors are the bane of my existence. The little tab right here, this little red one, it pops out. It's like a safety. So I got that popped out, so I'm just trying to get this dang thing off. It's it's in pretty bad shape. So we're gonna try to get these things popped off. Usually you can just get a screwdriver and pry them off. Just like that. This one doesn't wanna come off though. So I just stuck my screwdriver in there to open up the butterfly valve just to leave some pressure off this so I can, because that kind of had to be pushed down as so I came off. So, next step, there's four bolts, 10 millimeter. Just get those out real fast. 
I'm really good at like making easy jobs hard. <laughs> No, there's one more, one more clip right here. Need to knock off. Okay. I'll just pull that one off once it's out. These freaking clips suck. Yeah, this thing's pretty dirty. I'm really curious to see what it's like inside here. Um, so, looks like we're gonna need some torque screws to get those out. All right, so we're gonna need a T15 Torx. I'm gonna get this guy off. Well, be very careful with your gasket. Mine just busted, so let's get a new one of those. And a tick. The sensor off. T20. So here's the sensor. It looks in pretty rough shape. Made in Mexico. keep us away from things that are plastic. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Ooh, this stuff lets you know if you got any cuts on your hands, that's for sure. neighbors on a rag this guy is extremely dirty and uh, probably why I have idle issues after a little bit of research um, I think I'm just going to just use some RTV and make my own gasket for this thing and uh, see how that goes. I got this thing pretty clean. It was way dirty before. Clean this guy. I scraped the old gasket off. Used some sandpaper to sand it down. I think there's still a little bit of built up in there, some carbon built up, but it's a lot better than what it was. Got me some blue RTV gasket maker, and we'll just make a new one. I also used a bunch of uh, Q-tips to help get in there and clean, so you may or may not want to do the same. All right, so it's really important that you put it on the right way, so you just Remember, you know, the springs on the front, and then this housing goes on the left side, right there, facing uh, the driver steering wheel. And then, so I got my little gasket maker in there. This is to wait an hour before torquing it down to torque specs. So, Guess you gotta wait now. So, I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna use some of this. 
on the center. Just, you know, center looked pretty nasty. You're right, I gotta wipe it. I mean, yeah, I can tell the difference right away. But it's, uh, looking a lot better. Make sure you take the O ring off, because that stuff might um, dry out the O ring. Let's put the sensor back in. You want to make sure it goes in the right way, too. So, you got to double check your how your uh, wire and connector is. So, tab is facing me, so let's make sure it goes in that way. So, yep, that's the right direction. So, let's uh, get it screwed on. Okay, I'm also just gonna spray in here. Gonna wipe around the edges. Make sure it's clean before we made it. Back together. Make sure you get it put on right. So spring, spring faces the front vehicle. I'm going to leave right the little bolts. 10 millimeter. Cables, air's all hooked up. So, well, let's uh, start her up and see what it's, what happens. Before my idle was right around. I mean, that looks like it's like six or seven hundred, and it's just right above it. So it was kind of idling weird, and it was jumping around. But now it's right at a thousand. Which is uh, where where it should be for normal idle. So it seems like it's running a ton better. So if you're having the same problems I was, that's an easy fix. So just things to be aware of when doing this job is uh, you know be aware of that gasket. And uh, like mine, I just pulled it apart and like part of it flaked off and. And uh, so I tried pulling a little bit, a little bit more, and then a big piece broke off. So if yours is intact, I'd say just leave it. But if it's was like mine where it was falling apart, just get some RTV gasket maker and make your own. So, but I'd say this thing is uh, good to go. Thanks for watching Blaine's World. Please subscribe. <laughs>